Hello and welcome to Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, where we speak to the best of the bronies and discover what makes them tick. We're in the summer months at last. Huzzah! Now ain't it about time? Let's take a look out the window and see what it's like. Ah, torrential rain. Oh, good on you, Scotland. You never fail to be a stereotype. Well, I guess I might as well distract myself from rubbish weather and uh, talk about our super special guest we have on the show tonight. Well, our guest here is an artist who hails from the cold lands of Norway, specifically right next to the sparkly, amazing glowing waterfall near Trondheim. Now, I'd always wondered what that glow was out the window, but please give a nice, warm, creative vibe special welcome to Tina Fountainheart. Tina, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Apart from all the torrential rain outside, I know it's summer and I know it's Scotland, but it's so typical. (laughs) (laughs) I can only hope it's better where you are. No, I was soaked tonight. Like, when I was going out, and uh, it's just rain everywhere. Yay, I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Hooray! I'm not alone. <laughs> Yay, we just, both got wet. I was just going to the store, and I got drenched. Just, just, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, I know the feeling, but still, at least you're inside. You know, you're warm. You just got a cup of tea, so, you know... You're going to get warmed up. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. (laughs) Well, the first thing I actually wanted to ask you is a bit more of a general question, but it's just because, and I know there's going to be someone in the comments that's going to call me out for this, for getting this wrong, but I think you might actually be the first guest we've had on the show that actually hails from Norway. Oh, really? I think think it might be possible. I mean, there will be someone who's going to say, well, actually, Midnight Scribe, in season two, episode 13, you actually had this guest on and he lived in Norway, but I don't, I can't remember everyone. I'm fairly certain you're our first Norwegian guest. Well, that's, uh, that's an honour. Thank you. <laughs> well, for, hey, listen, it's great to have you on. And I'd, I should be really curious to, to know, actually, because whenever we have guests on from other countries, it's always quite interesting to hear kind of what the, the local brony scene is like and, and what and uh, you know how it is for yourself fitting into that. So I'd be quite curious to hear kind of what is Norway like in terms of um, it's my little pony scene? Uh, it was definitely bigger before and it has decreased uh, definitely, but we are still strong. The, the ones that are standing by is just lovely people and even the people who, uh, who quit are, you know, friends. So... <laughs> But but yeah, it's not as big, you know, in Norway compared to England or Scotland, for that matter. England? Um, what, what what country is that? What, what are you talking about? Ireland! <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, definitely a lot smaller communities uh, in this city. I do believe we are about 100 people. But then again, Trondheim is not as big as, uh, well, Oslo and stuff like that, so... So, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's glad to see that there's still a little scene there and that, you know, even those that have left the fandom are still friends and all that. Obviously, that's all fantastic and encouraging to hear. And, hey, listen, let's actually get to talking about yourself because, listen, your art style, the, the pieces I've seen, and obviously I've seen your Brony Scott, you know, I've seen your work art online and so on. Your art style is incredibly adorable. It's super colorful and very very polished it is absolutely fantastic thank you so much (laughs) well now we know rome wasn't built in the day and an artist doesn't become great without lots of practice and how do you find the process of making art like how is it you go about doing a piece and improving um for me it's basically giving myself challenges um if i can already do it then sometimes if i want to challenge myself i go to Uh, certain lengths of challenging myself so if I haven't done a specific thing before that is more appealing to me than doing something I have already done before Uh, you can almost describe it as rarity as episode in Manhattan or no not Manhattan but um oh what was it again 
uh, help. <laughs> I'm trying. To, my knowledge of the episodes is pretty poor as well, and I don't. I'm trying. I, I think I know oh. what you're on about, but I'm trying to remember. Was it Manhattan? I wait. Wasn't it Cantalot? The boutique in Cantalot where made all of these same dresses, but then she wanted to create all the different dresses and not, you know, copy, copy and stuff like that. It was with sassy saddles and stuff. Like that, I kind of want to make new things all the time. Yeah, and I've noticed on your um, on your social media that you have experimented both with different art styles, but also even things like you know trying out gifs. And I know that you've um, you've talked as well about how you're actually interested in learning a bit about two D animation as well. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so, like, what kind of projects or what kind of skills would you like to actually learn in the next year or so? Like, what kind of uh, goals have you got in mind? Um. That really depends on what I have the time for, because at uh, this point of time, I focus a lot of uh, my work on the stuff that I can bring to uh, conventions. And by the time I'm done with the conventions, it's uh, all, only just a month until Christmas. So I don't really have a lot of time for uh, animation, unfortunately, but I am definitely interested to to make animations again. And continue my passion on that. Well, fingers crossed you'll be able to get the time to do it at some point in the future after the the convention season's over and you'll be able to build up on that. Mm. But there's certainly no shortage in terms of the amount of traditional and digital art you've been up to, though. Like you, your Deviant Art is. What, what can I say about it? I mean, apart from the fact that you do art for a variety of different shows and games and fandoms like Night in the Woods, uh, Rick and Morty, My Little Pony, and so on. Most of all, one thing that I've noticed, particularly in your Deviant art, is that I think the majority of your art is you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a complaint, by the way. I love your OC, and it is brilliant to see all the different kind of designs and um, and poses and different uh, art styles that you go for in regards in regards to how you actually draw your own OC. So, no, it's, it's amazing the amount of creativity you've got in, in terms of the art pieces you do. But uh, which fandom... Uh, do you actually like drawn for the most and if there is there any fandom that you haven't drawn for or haven't seen much art for that you'd like to see more done for hmm well i definitely like drawing my little pony uh that is definitely my my top priority and then i guess the second one would be pokemon uh but i'm not i'm not quite sure uh which one i would choose if i had to choose a fandom that needs more uh, art. I guess maybe Ogretsuko would be one of them, even though there there is definitely a lot of artwork for those, but I, I, I want more, and I hope that season two starts soon so I can <laughs> make more myself. Well, fingers crossed, uh, <coughs> once the second season comes out, like I said, you'll be able to do a bit of art of that, and hopefully more people will actually do art for it as well. I mean, I must admit, I'm a... I'm not as uh, geeky as I like to pretend to be, so I'm afraid there's a lot of shows and fandoms that I, I get told about when I'm doing the show, and it's like, what's this thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, it sounds great. What is it? Sugar enough, <laughs> tell me, who is this? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, it's, that's absolutely great. And uh, and actually, going back to the uh, your art for a second, because um, obviously you do traditional pieces, you do digital, but actually... For a lot of the art you do, you live stream a lot of your art pieces as you create them, and uh, which is obviously fantastic to watch. And I've seen several of my friends actually attend regularly your streams. And it must be a bit of a juggling act to kind of uh, balance focusing on doing your art during a live stream and interacting with the audience members. Like, uh, how do you find doing live streams? Uh, in the beginning, it was quite tense. Uh, I... What can I say? Uh, I have this kind of uh, social anxiety a little bit. So for me, it was a big challenge to even uh, start streaming, focusing on more than one thing at a time. So live streaming is definitely one of the challenges I have for myself to to get better. And It's so... tough, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, definitely. And uh, you were talking there about the, the social anxiety and sort of doing the live streams and... It, that's obviously helped you out a bit in terms of coming out of your shell, I imagine. But kind of what made you make that first statement to actually doing it? Like, was it a just a case of wanting to give it a shot or was it actually to 
kind of help yourself get through this? I think my motivation was that people were asking me why I wasn't streaming. <laughs> and uh, and so I was just, you know, tempted to do it. And I was kind of scared, but I thought to myself, well, maybe this will be a good thing for me. Maybe maybe this will help me a little bit. And gosh, maybe it will also, you know, uh, spread uh, my work a little bit more. So I thought to myself, well, there, it, it doesn't hurt to try. And uh, so, yeah. Well, hey, listen, the fact that you've, um, that you've kept up with it as well and that you're continuing to do it, I mean, obviously that's absolutely fantastic. And it's clear that, um, it, I mean, I, I certainly hope that it's, uh, that it's been helping you out a bit and that you feel that you're coming a little bit out of your shell and, and able to cope with these um, kind of anxiety issues you have. Yeah. It has definitely been helping, and uh, it's also uh, a huge help from the community in my in my live streams as well. Uh, they are lovely people, and uh, yeah, they've been helping a lot. <laughs> well, that's that's fantastic. I'm I'm glad to see that they're throwing their support behind you. That's I mean, it's absolutely brilliant, and no wonder you're a lovely person as well, and you do such fantastic pieces as well. So. You know, it's no surprise that people are being drawn to your art and what you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know how to butter up my guests. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but uh, and actually, talking about the um, your art a bit more and about um, and about live streaming, I know that you're apparently you're working on a big commission piece as well. Like, could you tell us a bit about that? Yes, uh, I am working on a your character hair commission. It's a uh, huge pile of uh, uh, bases of characters that uh, are going to have numbers on them and uh, people can buy the slots of the characters. And uh, each each spot is also going to be color corrected to a specific price. So if people wanted to buy a cheaper price that's available and uh, there are also bigger slots for those who want uh, a bigger part of the picture or something. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm going to make this uh, for Brony Scott this year. And uh, yeah. <laughs> no, listen, I, I'm sure they will absolutely appreciate it. And because uh, I, I remember seeing your piece last year as well, which was absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and obviously having so many slots as well, hopefully you'll get lots of people coming in there to get the various slots and to be a big part of this massive group picture. And uh, actually, just to touch on that a little bit more, like uh, just because, you know, we might have some viewers here who might actually like to get a slot. Like, is there any details in terms of where they could get in touch with you or any details about the slots themselves that you can pass on? I guess uh, the easiest way would be to either uh, contact me through Telegram uh, and my live streams. Uh, But if you want to, if you don't have Telegram, um, then I guess Facebook it would be an option oh no worries well what we'll do we'll have all these links in the description below anyways so if you want to get in touch with tina you know get a slot on that commission or to check out her live streams follow the links below and you'll find out where to go and uh and also actually just to talk a bit more because i mean we talked about your art but there's a lot more that you're up to so why don't you give us a bit of an overview like what else is it that you can actually do apart from being an artist well i I've always been that type to, you know, try different and new things. So uh, I do a lot of crafting, uh, some pixel arts uh, and stuff like that. And uh, some knitting, I've done that and making plushies and what what I've not tried at this point. Uh, I've also been uh, practicing a little bit of uh, singing and uh, voice acting. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I like to do a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the way to be, you know, give it a shot. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, and as you do it and you try it more things, you'll grow as a person. You end up building more skills and you never know where you'll end up. Mm-hmm. So does that mean that there might be a potential then for a Tina Fountainheart a Brony EP some point in the future then, if we're lucky? Uh, EP? <laughs> I just realized how much of a music nerd I am that I just had to refer to an EP. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm such a I'm such a geek. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. 
I'm so it's, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so used to having like because occasionally we have musicians on. And they're always talking about the latest EP or LP or thing that they've got on. So it's like I'm mm. so used to just using terminology instead of just instead of just going, "Hey, if you, you plan to put a new song out." <laughs> yeah. But yeah, is that something that you would say like in terms of music? Is that something you're wanting to try out more in the future? Like, have you got any sort of ideas in terms of like, or is it just kind of give it a shot, see where you end up? I mean, I think. My uh, biggest problem with it is the fact that I'm too scared to do it. And uh, But if anyone came up to me and asked if I could, you know, voice something or uh, uh, sing a bit of something or just feature in anything, I would probably say yes immediately. Uh, and if not for my voice, I could always do a uh, solid Fluttershy. <laughs> Speak to MC Arch. Speak to MC Arch. He will have you on in an instant. MC Arch? Oh yeah, Arch needs you. No question at all. We had him on in the last episode and he was uh, looking for voice art- artists for his uh, new album as well and for singers. So yeah, I reckon, genuinely, give him a buzz. I wouldn't be surprised if he could use you. Um, That would be awesome. I shall, right, we shall boop him. We shall make this happen after the end of the show. That is the reward for surviving creative vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, that is what you've done. We've actually reached the end of the show. You have made it to the end. You're safe hands. You're absolutely fine. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hope you've had a good time. I hope you've enjoyed yourself here. I know this was a little unusual experience. I know we've had one or two technical problems as well. But I hope you've had a good time here. Yeah, and if there are any technical problems that, you know, if if you guys need to record it again, I will be available. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't worry. Sugar Dove is an amazing editor. She makes me sound professional all the time, so that's no mean feat. If she can do that, you're going to be fine. I wouldn't worry. <laughs> <laughs> But I tell you what, we had best wrap up the show. My thanks to Tina Fountainheart for being on the show. My thanks to you guys for watching. And of course, if you want to get in touch with us, you know, for constructive criticism, perhaps you want to uh, talk a bit about the show, you've got questions for us, perhaps you are a creator in the fandom or outside who'd perhaps like to be featured on the show, feel free to get in touch with us. We are all over the interwebs, you know. We're on the Facebooks, we're on the Twitter, we have the YouTube channel where you're following us right now. We also have a Discord server, how modern of us, the Creative Vibe server, where you're welcome to join us there as well. And of course, we have our email address, which is highonbronies at hotmail.com. So if you want to get in touch with us, pick one of those channels, you will find us one way or another. But we shall wrap up the show there for tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great weekend. And the final word from Midnight Scribe is, as always, please subscribe. Thank you.